Hello, everybody. It's me, Nota Fingrimes with Orange. And I'm so, so excited to be here today to tell you more about what's happening to the lovely little girl, Katie, and her brand new crazy friends, the Half Brothers, Cliff Hanger and Hiff Clanger. They're not only half brothers, they're also half dragons. And I don't even know what that means, but it's so crazy. Now, before we get started in telling more of the story of Katie and Cliffhanger and Hiff Clanger and what they're getting up to, I wanted to say that so, so much has happened in the story, literally from a flying car to a barrel to an ibab. And if you don't know what an ibab is, I'm going to tell you. An ibab is an inflatable blow-up boat, which happened in the last episode of this fantastic story. But don't feel bad. If you don't know what's going on in the story, I think the best thing to do, instead of watching this one first, or the one before this one first, or the one before that, go right to the very beginning, which is the first time I start the story of Katie and her sadness because she had to move away from where she loved to live and go to a new place. And you follow the story all the way from that right up until the last, last episode, which our beautiful and lovely and story-loving friend Harriet told us the last episode and it was filled with the most crazy and amazing things. So many crazy and amazing things that I can't remember to tell you everything that happened. We're going to pick up our story after Katie and Hiff Clanger and his brother, the wonderful Cliffhanger, arrive at this most beautiful and calm and gorgeous special lake. It's a lot of stuff that got them to be at this special lake. But finally, they were at the lake. And in the middle of the lake was a kind of strange and beautiful island. And on this beautiful and strange island was a special castle, a kind of palace castle. And they believed that in this castle was an answer that Cliffhanger and Hiff Clanger were looking for. Information about their mum, their mother, their mother person who had disappeared. They were hoping that they were going to find out something interesting and important and most definitely magical about their mum and that they would get some family information which they were seeking. It's true. They finally arrived at the shores of this amazing, amazing, special kind of lake, which had water slides. But these were not water slides going into the lake. They noticed that these were water slides coming out of the lake. And if they were standing on the edge of the lake, there was no way that they were going to be able to use the water slides. Because the water slides that were coming out of the lake were being used by the mermaids. Well, they thought mermaids. But these were no sort of ordinary kind of mermaids. These were special mermaids. These were mermaids. Mermaids, indeed. They spoke very, very softly, mostly because they spoke under the water of the lake and it all sounded a little bit like a murmur, like murmurs. And that's why these special 
mermaids were called mermaids and they did lots of whispering and sometimes their whispers from the one mermaid to the other mermaid would kind of come together and there would be a mermaid song and these songs were very special songs because these songs were sung in a mermaid dish which was the special mermaid language and Hif Clanger and Cliffhanger and Katie were standing on the edge of the lake and suddenly they heard something which went like And the three of them looked at each other. First Katie looked at Cliffhanger and then she looked at Hif Clanger. And it was a look like. And then Cliffhanger looked at Katie. And then he looked at Hif Clanger. And Hif Clanger looked at them like. Because they didn't understand the mermaid language. And this meant it was going to be really hard because even though they had an imam, an inflatable blow-up boat, they were going to have to get permission from the mermaids to cross the lake and get to the other side. But how were they going to talk to the mermaids if the mermaids spoke in mermaidish, which sounds like the three of them sat down on the shores of the lake and because they didn't know what it was they were going to do they picked up tiny little stones that were on the sort of beach of the lake and first Katie threw one and then Cliffhanger threw one, plop. And then even Hif Clanger threw one, plop. And then they started to throw the stones, plop, 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 plop. Made the stones as they hit the surface of the water, turning the surface into ripples. And the ripples were like waves, and the waves were like sound waves. And slowly, slowly, from the surface of the water came these new little ripply things and little, little tiny heads popped up. It was the mermaids and they had been called to the surface of the water. First, their tiny little antennas popped up and then their little faces broke the surface of the water and there must have been about 18 mermaids. And Katie said, Hi, we were hoping you could help us. We want to cross to the special island in the middle of the lake so that we can go to the castle because there's a message in the castle that we really, really, well, that my friends really, really, really need to hear about their mother. Unfortunately, the little mermaids looked at each other because they didn't understand any single thing that Katie had said because she was speaking in English. English and not in Mermaidish. Then Katie had a brilliant idea all by herself. She remembered that if you pick up a shell and listen to the shell, you can hear the sounds of the sea. And so she picked up a shell and she mis whispered into the shell. Oh, because I forgot to tell you, there were lots and lots of shells on this little beach of the special mermaid lake. 
And so she whispered into the shell, Mama Maidish, can you understand this if I whisper into the shell? Will you be able to hear this? And oh, she kept the message locked in the shell. And then she threw the shell into the lake. And all the little mermaids, their little heads popped back down again. And they disappeared. And Katie and her friends Cliffhanger and Hiff Clanger waited and waited. And then suddenly, pop, 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 the little mermaid's head popped back up. And they said, but one of them was saying that into the shell. And they, that one, threw the shell back. And Katie caught it in her hands and she held it up to her ear and she said, it's, she listened to the message and the message was, all you have to do is blow up the imam and put it on the lake and then we will help you get to the other side where you can go to the castle and find out what it is you need to find out. Katie looked at her friends and she told them instantly the message that she had heard and then they nodded. Both Cliffhanger and Hiff Clanger had little tiny tears of joy peeping out of their eyes and they blew and they blew and they blew and they blew and they took turns and it took long 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 but soon the ibab was blown up and they all jumped into the ibab which was like a bright red and blue dinghy that managed to float on the lake and they were all ready to go and it's just as well that the mermaids decided to help them because they didn't have an oar or an outboard motor. I don't know what happens next. Maybe because that's going to happen in the next installation of this unbelievable story. So make sure you tune in to find out exactly what happens to Katie and Cliffhanger and Hifflanger and whether or not they find out the important information about their mom. I hope you loved this part of the story. See you next time. Bye.